Cable news viewers in this country were treated to hours of live coverage this afternoon as suspicious packages were discovered all over Boston. Roads were closed, the Charles River was closed, and questions were asked about terrorism. Then came the explanation. They turned out to be this thing, outdoor lighted signs to promote a movie coming out in May based on an animated series on the Cartoon Network called Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Moon of nights, and you know that we're back. Everybody else in the house know that they whack. Three in the morning, I'm looking for the poor. Know, know that, that we freeze, so get on your knees. Check it out, y'all. Check it, check it out. Check it out, y'all. All kids out of the pool for adult swim. All kids out. In 2007, Adult Swim had one of their biggest events coming up, a big screen adaptation of one of their original shows, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, a show about food items doing... stuff. I'm a detective! Clear the crime scene and let me think. Meteors did it! That'll be $20. The film, titled Aqua Teen Hunger Force colon movie film for theaters, was set to be released on the 10th of April. The marketing team for the film hired Interference Inc, who gave the task to Peter Brodowski, also known as Zebler, and Sean Stevens. The duo designed light bright panels to look like two of the Moon Knights from the show, Ignignoct and Ur, who were based on pixel art from the Atari era of consoles. Before placing the devices, Interference higher-ups gave them suggestions on where to put them. Make sure they are placed in visible and trendy places with high traffic such as train stations and overpasses. The first batch were placed around mid-January, this being labelled Boston Mission 1, with the second batch being placed around the 29th of January. And two days later, it would all go to shit. Holy sh**, it's a bomb! On the 31st of January, police were alerted of a strange object placed around civilian station. A hour later, bomb squad was called in for assistance. So do you think it's a bomb? There's only one way to find out. Over the city, more and more devices were discovered leading to highways being shut down. This went on for hours until Turner Broadcasting, the company that owns Cartoon Network, stepped in. Dancing is forbidden. Zebler and Sean would be arrested and put on trial. The duo's lawyer told them not to talk about anything outside of court. And so when asked by the media, the duo talked about hairstyles. I think my dreadlocks are pretty nice and they're going to keep growing for a little while. Can you cut the crap and tell us what's going on? There, I want to redirect this onto the topic of haircuts in the what 70s. The I want to educate myself about it a little bit more. This was probably the worst idea they could have come up with, but go off, I guess. The two would end up having to do community service to pay their debt back to the city of Boston. Turner Broadcasting and Interference Inc. paid two million in damages hoping to move past the event. Lastly, the head of Cartoon Network, Jim Samples, stepped down. I hope my decisions can allow us to put this chapter behind us. Both Boston and the marketing team would be lambasted for the way they handled the situation. Boston for its reaction, especially since Massachusetts has the Institute of Technology, which would have probably identified the devices as not a threat. And the marketing team for not realizing placing devices with batteries and wires exposed in a post 9-11 world was probably not a good idea. Do any of you guys have any ideas how we're going to start the fifth season? Oh, I know. Why not an episode mocking Boston for the whole scare? You're a f 
f***ing genius. Yes, you did hear that right. To kick off the fifth season, they thought it'd be a great idea to make an episode mocking the Boston bombing event. The episode, simply titled Boston, follows the main characters, Master Shake, Frylock and Meatwad, as they go to Boston in an attempt to sell Meatwad. Through some shenanigans, the entire city of Boston would have been mistaken for a bomb. Look, seriously? It's just a light. No, you look seriously at the f***ing bomb! Oh my freaking god, it's a bomb! The episode was almost completely finished before being cancelled, as to not piss off the city of Boston anymore than they already had. Co-creator of Aquatine, Matt Maiellaro, said this was his favourite episode he ever worked on. A rumour states that Ted Turner once said, If the episode is ever leaked, I will personally cancel the series. Many had called for the episode to be released. Then the 2013 Boston Marathon bombing happened making it unlikely the episode would ever be released and stay in the CN vault. The DVD of the fifth season may have originally planned to feature the episode, as Ignignog, dressed up as Bin Laden, can be seen on the inner sleeve, but the episode was nowhere to be seen. Until 2015, almost eight years after the event, the episode would be released online, going completely under the radar, until YouTuber Rebel Taxi made a video on the event, causing it to be unearthed. This was a massive win for both Aqua Teen Hunger Force fans, as well as people who specialise in lost media. So all was good. Wait, why is sad music starting to play? Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Forever. The final season begins Sunday, June 21st. On Adult Swim. A few months after the episode was found, Aqua Teen Hunger Force was cancelled. After 11 or 13 seasons? Mike Lazzo, head of Adult Swim at the time, wanted to move on from the series. The show's cancellation also led to the cancellation of his second feature film, Death Fighter. Aqua Teen Hunger Force colon movie film for theaters would be the only film as of 2021 Adult Swim would ever produce. To be honest, after all the shit that went down with it, I can totally understand why. The Moon and Night bomb scare should be a case study for any advertiser on how to not market a film. Everyone get the f out the way.